Ladies and gentlemen, for the final session of the day, I'd like to introduce Angel Hernandez. He'll be doing a session on the campus arrows and their robotics. Give a round of applause for Angel Hernandez. Thank you. We actually have many people. I was not expecting that many people, but most of you have robots. Um, this activity is called Bot Meeting. What do you think this activity is about? It's probably about meeting robots. Kind of easy one, right? How many of you have robots here? Raise your hands. I need to identify you. OK. How many of you are willing to talk about your robots? None? Really? OK, OK. I have three there, so we're going to finish really quick. OK, this activity, we, let, me, let me give you some, some uh, background on the, why, why we do it, anyway. Campus Party is an event that we've been doing since 1997. And we started with some activities related to robotics in around 2007. So it was a long time till we actually had a robotics place, right? But once we started, we found out that it was really difficult to meet other people from the same community. For example, I know there are some people from some communities called Let's Make Robots, right? For example, that's one of them. Um, and they apparently didn't know each other, right? You, you guys haven't met before uh, one of the campus parties, at least in person, right? So that's one of the, that's one of the ideas we wanted to help. The, we wanted to help these people meeting and we wanted to know more about the robots that you guys are bringing. How many of you, not, I know how many of you have robots here, but how many of you make robots at home or something related to ro with robots or a study, something related to robotics, maybe engineering, something related? Okay, most of you, nice. That's better. So you probably have some interest in robotics. How many, how many of you would like to build a robot? Ever, I know some of you already are building. Okay, okay. So this is the place, what we are gonna do right now, this is gonna be the place to meet the robots, to meet the builders that we have in the other side of the, of the, of the event. These are the guys that are spending many hours just putting cables together and building boards and stuff like that. So you will see people that are actually doing this for free. They do it just because this is passion. They are passionate about robotics, as you should be in your lives as an engineer. And you will have the chance to not just see them here on the stage, because they will come, come up in a minute and talk about the projects, but you will have them also in the arena. So if you are shy a little bit and you don't want to talk to them now, or you are not, I don't know, you're shy enough to not make any questions here, I encourage you to go to the arena and just say, hey, I saw your talk for five minutes and I would like to know how you did this or why you, how are you programming this or what language or whatever. Anyway, um, my name is Angel Hernandez, as he said before. I've been doing this for many years now. I'm a robot builder myself. I started making quick robots that were pretty useless, so my mom was always asking, when are you going to make a robot that is useful? When are you, typical things, no? When are you going to make a robot that irons my uh, clothes? And I've seen one. There you go. I've seen the first one, actually. First one in my life that is, my mom would be so happy about your robot, man. Uh, so I've been building robots myself just for fun. But I always like to make robots that are not mm, autonomous robots. I like robots that are useful for catching the attention. Right, bringing attention to, or or robots are very loud usually. I'm from Spain, and that's what they say about us, right? It's not true, but that's what they say. Spaniards are loud, right? Did anyone say anything? Okay, uh, we're not loud, but my robots are, and I like I like making these kind of robots just because it's fun, and I know people like them, and I know it's a good thing to have in an event, for example. If you want to be on TV, it's good that you have a robot close to you because you are going to be in TV all the time, right? We have some people with experiences here on TV. Um, so building robots has been my life for ever since I was probably 11. And I know many people here have the same story. So what I want to do now is um, ask for some volunteers who want to start. And I'll give you instructions. If you don't start, I'm going to start calling people. So it's up to you. OK, there you go. Marcus, go up. What we're going to do is a quick presentation. Go, go for it. Yeah. 
And after Marcus, I don't want anyone being shy. So raise your hands and go next, OK? We're going to do a quick presentation. No PowerPoint, no pressure. Don't worry about time. We have a full hour to talk about 10, 12 okay, robots. Right, right. So you, it's not like you're going to spend 10 hours on your robot. But um, you're free to talk about whatever you want, your technology, uh, whatever you want to show. If you want to fly it, I've been, I've been trying to make it fly the whole afternoon, and he didn't want to try anyway. OK, this is your stage, all yours. It's on, yeah. OK, hi. Um, my name is Marcus. I come from uh, Germany. This is my latest project. Um, it's not actually a robot, but it's going to become a robot. Um, it could fly here, but I have a new insurance, and I'm not quite sure if it's still valid in the UK. So I won't let it fly here, and I have only this only rec uh, recopter here. Um, it's a microcopter. I call it Recopter for Microcopter Reinvented. Um, I'm also doing a robotics podcast. Unfortunately, actually, unfortunately, it's in German. But if you like, you can um, see this at roboticlabor.de. Um, we have over 2,600 listeners per month. Um, the first thing is I want to have some fun because I like this flying stuff. And you see, um, I, the first part, what I started is to control the eyes via the remote control here. And the next part, which is currently work in project, guess, is that I sent this data from the receiver to this Linux computer here. It's a Raspberry Pi. I think most of you heard of this little computer, at which, which then sends some audio files to the speaker who can say some text. Maybe this is a standard surveillance. Everybody keep calm, please, or something else. Um, it can also move the eyes. The next part, what I wanted to do is to use the camera on this computer, which can do some maybe some face recognition and to see where the eyes is and then move to the eyes so that you can feel a little bit, um, I don't know, <laughs> followed by these eyes or something like that. Um, maybe in the far, far future, I use another board which controls this microcomputer with this GPS sensor here, which is already built on, that it can fly autonomously around. And maybe, maybe in the far future, I will add this little sensor I didn't get out of the package now, um, which can um, recognize obstacles via laser and then maybe not fly against any obstacles or do some mapping or fly in an unknown environment or something like that. Um, yeah, that's so far. Everything is built from scratch with some parts from the internet and knowledge from the forums, from other users, from our friends from Let's Make Robots, which are also here and sitting over there at the table. And yeah, I think that's it. Did I forgot something? Any questions which I can't answer? Play some sound. Yeah, well, make I can some try sound there. I can try. Are you just are you just planning to hold a robot from the cable, or what is the cable for? Yeah, the cable is currently, um, because I don't have implemented the function from sending signals from the remote control to the Linux computer, it's just working. I can just receive some numbers from here to there. But this, the source code is from Saturday and from the last hour. I thought so it was going to be the safety cable. <laughs> no. That's it. No. So now I'm trying to connect to this computer. And this normally takes some seconds if everything works fine. And it's a little bit nervous here. Da, da, da. I have to play some Jeopardy music now. Yes? Wait. <laughs> Your transmitter there, which uh, frequency is that? Oh, I know you have to get the microphone because I have a follow up question. Is it uh, 5.4? Right? Oh, yeah, sorry, 2.4. And you have some uh, up and down links. Do you have more uh, things going up and down? No, currently uh, there is no telemetry, no, no sensor data which are transmitted. Only the, remote, the signals from the remote control if I pull a switch or something at the moment. 
How do you plan to work with a fa with a face recognition? Was it face recognition? I can translate on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, the the idea is to um, let some software um, run on the on the Raspberry Pi. OpenCV, for example, is for face recognition, and that it, then it um, recognizes a face, not my face, but some face, and then looks around, gives a command from the Raspberry Pi to this Arduino board here, and which then sends the um, makes the servers turn into the direction or the eyes. That's the idea. You're having way too many questions. <laughs> so you're actually making a flying blender, uh, which is going to be controlled on the basis of face recognition? Yes. This is the last time I move from here to there to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm connected to the um, to this computer, and normally when I type the speech command, which then normally will get automatically in the future, I would say building building these kind of robots is something that is happening lately, right? Because I see one here, I see another one there that we're gonna probably have someone talking about it. Um, so for how long have been these robots around? Like, I would say maybe two years that they became famous? I mean, building these kind of things? D difficult to say. Um, since I make this robot podcast and then I'm looking all over the news. And yeah, I would say the last one, two years, you can see every week some news, some new Arduino board, some right. new um, Linux board. Um, I would say this is increasing... How, how much do you think you have to spend to make one of these robots? Um, I mean, a hobbyist one. Yeah, if you, if you leave out the, the, the um, this transceiver here, which is very expensive, you can get this cheap for $100 or okay. so. You don't have to use this very expensive one. But the most expensive are the motors. If you want high-quality motors, you can expense 30 euros. You can expend 10 euros or 150 right. euros per motor. How much did so you spend? This one are for 30 euros. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's see if we hear something. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> okay, I think we heard it. <laughs> we don't have any censorship here. <laughs> and of course, uh, normally I would have to, it can also then do something like this. I think everyone who has done something with robot knows the song. Right. Just wait some seconds. Yeah, and the plan is then to, to control this music or stuff like the speech via this remote control or maybe automatically when it recognizes a face saying something or, yeah, something like that. And it can't be turned off. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, yeah, I have I a it. last question, because you, you've been here for 13 minutes. That 13. was a lot. Too actually. fast. Yeah, no, 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 that was oh, okay. perfect. Like, but we have another 10 people to talk here. Okay. Um, one last question. Where can we find information about your robot? Yeah, it's on the website. It's called recopter.de. Okay. R-E-C-O-P-T-E-R.de. Unfortunately, currently it's in uh, German because I don't find any practical translation uh, uh, WordPress plugin. So if maybe someone has a, an idea for a great WordPress plugin for German and English pages, I will translate everything. Awesome. And any, if uh, there are any questions, we are sitting over there at letsmakerobots.com. Right. .com? Yeah. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you, buddy. So we have two microphones. I don't have to be walking around now. Thank you. Who wants to be next? There you go. My mom is going to be so happy with your robot. I wish my man would be watching, you know. I'll definitely go back home and put it there. Do you need any help? I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. Ooh. Is that your computer? Yep. Do you want to hold it? Oh, no. Okay. Hello? Hi. My name is Vadim, and uh, I'm from Canada. And uh, this is my... Uh, Little line follower robot. 
Uh, for those who don't doesn't know what line follower is, is uh, this robot just follows a black line on a white surface. So I'm going to try to create a little track for him. So you need, do you need to tape my clothes if you're planning to iron them? <laughs> you can make it st stripped already. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm good then. <laughs> so uh, I always wanted to make a line follower, but never had a chance to do it. And when I, my wife came up to me and said, oh, our iron is dead and stuff. So I saw, hmm, that's got to be a good line follower, <laughs> buddy. So... Um, We'll turn it on, and uh, it has two modes now. Initially, it had uh, only line following mode, which you can see now. Uh, sorry, it's a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> but when I added uh, remote capabilities, which you obviously switch with this thingy, which is supposed to be switching stuff in real irons. <laughs> And I can control it with a PST controller. Maybe. Uh oh. Oh, sorry for that. It goes through computer, so it probably timed out or something. <laughs> uh, I might try to fix that if you want. I'm not sure if I would be happy with my shirt under your iron right now. Here it is. Yeah, that's basically it. So uh, it has a microcontroller and batteries all fit inside. Beautiful lighting. And it has uh, two motors here and uh, reflectance sensors to sense the line. And pretty simple board, actually. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Do you guys have any question about that? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay, um, how long does it take you to build? Just a sec. Uh, cumulative with uh, upgrading to remote control capabilities, I would say like 36 hours straight labor. But it's obviously more than that. <laughs> Thanks. Am I right that you made a, uh, an, an autonomous fridge magnet as well? Yes, I did. And Unfortunately, and it committed suicide. <laughs> but <laughs> and you also did an alarm clock that was walking by itself. Yeah, it was running away. <laughs> what? What? Do you have a next project where you find something in your household? Uh, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> what would that be? Ah, uh, it's a secret so far. Ooh, shampoo. <laughs> Come back to letsmakerobots.com and you'll find out. Nice. <laughs> Awesome, who wants to be next? All right, thank you. Uh, just Come up the here. Yep. Oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. The joystick communicates directly with the robot or with the uh, laptop? What it does, it's, it's Bluetooth, communicates to computer, and when uh, computer sends uh, commands via XB module, which my uh, robot also has, like a mating party. Anything else? And thank you. Thank you. So we have new robots from a good friend of ours. Nice.
Let you talk. Good evening. My name is Peter. I am from Germany. Yes, and I've built robots for my hobby since 10 years now. And I show you some of my creations or some creations for others. First, I want to show you my Frankenbob. It's called because it looks a little bit scary, like Frankenstein's monster or a zombie robot. It um, starts with an ID from the Let's Make Robots forum, which is some guy has offered the plans for a 3D printed robot. And I find it looks nice, but I haven't don't have a 3D printer, so I built my own made from polystyrene shields, just glued together, and it looks nearly the same. It doesn't do much, it just can move around and have a sensor to, to detect obstacles in the front. And yes, it has a mouse made from an um, LED matrix and if it starts to move take some seconds or not I don't know <laughs> no sorry don't move it's based on an Arduino Nano which is inside the box and it has an ultrasonic sensor, the LED matrix, four servos for movement, two for each leg. And it's yeah, programmed in Ar Arduino language. Because the robot is a little bit lonely and I built a female robot for it, a girlfriend called Bobette, or Little Red Bobette. And this is 3D printed from my friend Vadim, he sent it me from Canada to Germany and maybe he moves better. <laughs> There's also an infrared sensor to, ab to uh, detect obstacles and yeah, okay, it moves. Sometimes it falls over. <laughs> And it would fall down from the table because it has no cliff sensor or something else. Later on, I want to make uh, communications between the two robots. So I don't know, maybe she begins to dance and he wants to walk around or something like that. I don't know. Let's see what happens. And the third robot is not a robot built by me, I just assembled it. It's a kit from a guy from Let's Make Robots who sells his stuff based on an Arduino. Micro magician controller, different setups. Here we have a front sensor for ob obstacle avoiding in different directions. He moves with servos with hacked servos for continuous mode and yes you can build it without soldering just just with a screwdriver it's that's everything put in batteries program it and you're finished so that's it so far awesome thank you I don't think we are competing with Asimo here with this kind of robots, right? I don't think we're going to run as fast as Asimo from Honda. I don't think Not we're in that stage. Not yet. If, if I run it too fast, it fall over. Uh, right, you right. Have to they look it. better than the Asimo. What about that? Yeah. They look definitely better than the Asimo. Yeah, so Honda didn't, didn't make a, better, a good job with that, but you did. Okay. Um, do you guys have any, any questions question? about a 3D printed robot? Very cool stuff. Uh, the plans are free and instructables or let's make robots. You can download it if you have someone who has a 3D printer, he can print it out. Takes seven hours or so. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not the fastest thing ever. No. <laughs> Perfect. Or if you're a fast printer. Okay. 
Well, no questions? You're going to have him sitting up. I think you guys are sitting all together, right? All on the same okay. table. Okay, so they're in the arena. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Wants to go next. I heard they want to go next. Not like a volunteering thing, but... So you can bring your own robot. What about that? You can actually go... Uh, Control P, right, and print your own robot and have something like that, or some flying robots we have around also. All yours. Hello, my name is Andrew Ivanez. I come from Spain. And really, some of you might say, This is not a robot, this is a drone. Really, it's a drone, it's a flying drone. Okay, uh, I will be brief because tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., at Leonardo Stage, I will, introduce, I will be introducing this project in the whole the whole history but let me explain you if you don't if you can't attend tomorrow morning uh, a brief this is a hexacopter drone uh, it's based on in arduino it's based on arduino here it's a version of arduino called arducopter it's a standard open source hardware platform and it has six motors because the goal of this drone is a special goal it has a special goal it's not only to fly uh, the usual regular uses of a drone at this time is something making, like taking pictures, making videos, but we, we want to make something special and also to take the idea of, for the people that drones are being used only for military uses. And then we think about that, how we can make something special with the drones. And the idea was that we can bring a defibrillator. I will show you what's a defibrillator. The fibrillator is the machine that when a, a person has an attack at his heart, okay, a cardiac attack, this is the machine that the, the, the medical personnel puts in your heart, on your chest, to try to recover you from the cardiac attack. Okay? Then we make a software and a full platform that brings this defibrillator flying from where a place that we call drone ports, there are something like a little hangars where the, the drones are uh, stay with power and also connectivity for data. And then we have drone points in, the, in, in a city, for example. And then when the emergency happens, some, someone from the emergency team in, in a 999 in UK or 111 in Spain or whatever number, emergency number, the drone flies from this place to the place where the cardiac attack has happened and then a person can, can take the defibrillator out and try to solve the life of this man that is happening, or this woman that is happening, the cardiac attack. This is more a mixed hardware and software platform because the hardware is so important. It, the drone has to be constructed. We have, done, we have constructed it by ourselves. But also there is a lot of software on the, on the rear that I will explain tomorrow morning. And that's all. Thank you. Do you have any questions for him? Oh, there's one question, of course. Price? Wait for the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what software uh, are you running on the Arduino and why did you choose this? Do you know of any other softwares? Well, we choose Arduino because it's an open platform. Are uh, you mean what version? No, I mean, if you just take an Arduino and put it on a multicopter, it's not flying. You're using uh, KK multicopter. You're using some some of, some form of software to control it. Yes. W which which software Arducopter. are you running? Arducopter. Arducopter. Okay. Arducopter. We use Arducopter. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't say. I, I haven't said it. I, we use Arducopter. Okay. Arducopter is the special version for Arduino to fly drones. Okay. Uh, did you check any other softwares, or did you just say uh, Arducopter? Many. Yeah, why did, why did you choose Arducopter then? Uh, really, I will explain it tomorrow morning, but I can advance to you because I have a, uh, mm, I have a little relationship with the men that is no, no, uh, driven the drone, drone history in the world. It, the, the men from, uh, it's, it was the wired editor, Chris Anderson. He's, he, he takes off a very special job that he has for many years, being the, the most, one of the most important persons in the world, as being at the chief editor of the Wired magazine. He leaves this job and he, he becomes to be a CEO of a company that puts his efforts on becoming this platform Arducopter. 
the huge platform from drug controller. I believe in that man. I believe in his people. I know them. And then I choose this because we can, we can program it. We can do many things with the platform we have tested. And we think that this is the best option at this time. It has to be an open platform because, you know, what we're doing is programming a lot of things inside of this. We cannot choose, for example, a, a, a DGA. There are a lot of platforms, closed platforms that fly better than, than this, but they are closed. We need an open platform for two reasons, because we need to, to program over it and also because we want to be this open to anyone copy it and, and use it in other places. This was the reason. Um, so is it Copter Autonomous and is going by GPS and the coordinates? It's going by GPS, by coordinates, and it's autonomous. It's pre-programmed. But uh, this, this is the, my, my conference tomorrow morning, but let me explain. Mm -hmm. The question is that you have a huge city, and in a huge city, where do you live? I don't remember your, where is your town, your city? Where are you Berlin. coming from? From Berlin. Berlin, I don't remember how much, one million persons? How much people? Three and a half. Three and a half million persons. Four. To cover all Berlin with a standard of defibrillators, you need thousands of defibrillators, okay? Yeah. Because Berlin is a huge city. Our idea was, what about if we can, we can put, for example, 100 only defibrillators with drones, not thousands of defibrillators, and bring them flying, okay? And the, then the, the question is, uh, the, the idea is to have several hundred defibrillators with drones, and several thousands of different places that the drones can land with the defibrillator. I mean, this can, this, this can solve m many resources and money because it will be cheaper. Yes, but autonomous flight is, isn't allowed in Germany. Well, that's, <laughs> the, that's, that's the fantastic point. I will, I will, okay. this, this is one of the most important things that of, on, the other, on my conference. At this time, this is not illegal, but illegal. <laughs> I mean, there, it, it depends. For example, in UK here, they have almost, almost ready uh, the law for allow drones to fly. In Germany, it's different. In, 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 in US, it's different. In Spain, it's different. In every country. But the important thing is that this is happening. Almost all the countries are, are beginning to have laws about this. And in the near future, no matter one year, there will be a legislation that will allow us to make it or not. It will depend. Okay. I'm going to stop it right here because you guys are asking way too many questions to this guy that is going to have to give a talk tomorrow. So we one, don't want to reveal question, everything. Question, okay. Wh what is the question? How, how far um, does it reach this current That's setup? An and how long does it take? Um, when you fly, fly drones, you have to decide one thing very important at the beginning is the weight of the drone against, against the, the batteries. Okay. This is running, a, I remember, a 40S batteries. It can run something like this in this weight. It can run something like 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And it's fast, really fast, really fast. In 20 minutes, you can almost cross London. It's so fast, really. But, you know, it's, it's more a question that the question that this man asked is a, is a matter of legislation because, you know, we we can we we can try to f to to bring defibrillators to places, but someone has tried here in London to bring pizzas. And what about if the, if the sky is full of drones bringing pizzas, defibrillators, or whatever? <laughs> this will be crazy. We need legislation, and it will come because it's needed. Okay, don't reveal anything else. You are <laughs> talking way too much here. Okay. Thank you anyway. <laughs> Do you want your robot, or we just leave it here? <laughs> we can leave it. That's fine. Sorry. Do you need any help? That's fine. Who wants to be next? Oh, you guys are being shy. Lutz. Oh, I think we've lost a robot. Yeah, not sure if this is working. Okay, um, I'm Lutz. I'm also from Germany. I'm living in Shanghai now. Um, I got something unfinished here. If you have time, just check our table. Uh, it, it will be done by by the end of the campus party, hopefully before. Um, this is just um, a bunch of components what we throw together. This is mainly what, what we're doing. We have some some parts and think what you can do and in Shanghai we did with this with this space um, sumo robots 
Yeah? I'm not going to build a sumo robot because if you have one, you need another one. Yeah? And we might not have the time. So it will just be a robot which is roaming around. Maybe get a servo, get some ping pong balls as eyes, just to be funny. Um, another thing, this is um, a remaining uh, line follower from the campus party in Berlin last year. Um, what we did um, on our table, we did workshops, people could solder it together. Um, the idea for this is, we um, created this in our hackerspace in Shanghai, um, to build um, simple robots which can teach kids to use their hands for other things than just typing keyboards or, or using um, game controllers to play computer games. And the kids are really happy to, uh, to get this done. Yeah, they solder it together within two hours with hot glue, attach the motors with hot glue, use uh, bottle caps as wheels. Yeah? So it already uh, shows the people, um, it's not rocket science what you doing here, it's doable for everybody. And yeah, Wadim did a nice ring for his robot, it might work, I don't know. It just follows a line, yeah? Nothing else, there's no, no action or... Um, yeah. Yeah, you get the idea, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's basically all. Unfortunately, it was not enough time to prepare more for the campus party, but we have a bunch of components still on our table, and we are quite a lot of people to use them, and I guess we get at least three nice robots together by the end of the campus party. So if we need any volunteer to build robots, you have some material to put together, right? We still have some microcontrollers, motors, um, a bunch of um, LEDs, everything. Because yeah. when, I, when I started, I asked if they wanted, there were some people interested in building robots, and some of them have never built a robot. So they probably can come to you and ask you about that? They can just come and awesome. try their best. Awesome, perfect. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Lutz? Questions? Oh, you being shy. Thank you. <laughs> you being shy. That's fine. They're all sitting together, so you will sit with a bunch oh. of robots. That's fine. So we're awake now. Uh, they're going to be next. Come up on stage. This is kind of a futuristic robot with, you know, you, do you, how many of you remember the Minority Report movie? There you go. There you go. That's what I thought when I saw it. Do you guys want to have the microphone while you're putting it together? Introduce yourself and explain what you're doing there. All yours. Hello, I am Martin, I am from Czech Republic and we are international group. Uh, I say you sorry for my English because my English is not good. And I think that is all. This is Stefan. And I'm Luca. We uh, came, me and Stefano, from Italy, from uh, that uh, institute, that institute that is uh, School of Robotics. That institute uh, is uh, a teaching institute approved by uh, me, your. That is the uh, superior institute of teaching in Italy. Uh, substantially, uh, School of Robotics it is uh, an association, a non-profit association, that uh, um, want to carry robotics and technology all over the world. 
here you can see uh, some contact if you want to contact us. And uh, now we are here to show this project that is called uh, Armbot. Okay, this project is uh, one robotic arm controlled by my human arm. Okay, uh, we use uh, three, uh, two accelerometer and uh, three, resist uh, three flexible resistor and one gyroscope. Now we can uh, move only end because we don't have time to finish this. We work uh, on this project only one week and this is not uh, for a little time. And uh, this uh, uh, sort of gloves uh, uh, now is controlling this arm. But our uh, project is uh, to do a um, universal controller uh, so that uh, you, we can control other devices like uh, a submarine robot uh, or uh, a car or something like this. With better design. Yeah, as I said and uh, some brief uh, technical data. This uh, um, robot uh, has two central units. The first one that receives data and the second one that sends data. That unit is an Arduino FIO and that unit is an Arduino Uno. Arduino is a microcontroller shield designed in Italy from uh, an Italian uh, inventor. We send uh, data from here to here using an, a module called XB that uh, provides uh, um, Wi-Fi connection. And now Martin, that uh, designed the arm, can uh, say some, something about it. OK. I created these uh, plastic things. Uh, but this design is not okay for me. It n it's for me, it's not good work because uh, my friend's design was in some style of this box, but our printer can't print uh, these things in this box that uh, in last week I must do s uh, this and it's not good. And I don't know what I say. <laughs> this is all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, you better have some questions for these guys now. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Oh, you have a microphone? You should just keep the microphone for yourself and just I'm take just, it home. I'm just trying you to it. help you. Oh, that's you want good. That's good. <laughs> Uh, do you have any filter on the software? And if so, where's the filter? Is that on the uh, Arduino on the arm or the Arduino not on the arm? A filter, uh, do you have a uh, Catman mode filter? Do you have, uh, are you taking the raw input and just feeding it? Or are you, are you uh, trying to make sure it's not making sudden jerky movements? Because there will be some, do you understand me? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, only a little bit. Okay. Uh, if you uh, okay. When when you have the raw data, the the data from the okay. accelerometer, and yes, it will be. Uh, sometimes you will have uh, spikes. You'll have chunk. Yeah. Are you filtering this? Yeah. yeah. Do you, are you filtering that and on the arm or, or down? We have used uh, two different uh, uh, type of accelerometer. One analogic and one uh, digital. So the data are um, not equal. And we have uh, filtered with uh, a library and um, using uh, a medium uh, function and uh, deleting uh, some data. But this filter, er, this filter is not good. And then we create our filter uh, and we, take, we put this into a receiver. We uh, here, because we have only 8 megahertz of uh, clock, we uh, send da uh, elaborate data and send and stop. Elaborate uh, uh, process. Take uh, take value uh, from accelerometer and uh, flexible resistor and uh, map this value and stop. If you were controlling the arm with just potentiometers, just uh, you know, good values, 
would the arm be steady or would it still be moving kind of jerky? Yeah, and uh, we have uh, um, selected a range um, in uh, where the, the servo motors will not move. Uh, for example, three degrees. If the data aren't uh, in um, this range, the servo maintain the previous uh, um, position. Thanks. Thank you, guys. They are sitting very close to the Let's Make Robots people. So if you have any questions for them, because I'm sure you will, they are going to be sitting there with a lot of media and so on. Awesome. We have another 10 minutes, and we still have some robots to talk about, but we have the next one ready, at least. Thank you. Um, well, hello. My, <coughs> my name is Jose Miguel. I live near Barcelona in Spain. Yeah. And this is my first presentation in English. So, um, uh, this is my, my first, my first ro home mo homemade robot, uh, which is uh, just a, a vehicle with two wheels vehicle based on an Arduino. And it has two um, distance sensors, one ultrasound and infrared. And it also has a Bluetooth module to communicate with uh, any enabled Bluetooth enabled device. It also has a, a, a digital compass, but it didn't work. Um, I, I should have it, I should have tested it before the construction, but when I tested when it was constructed, uh, it didn't work because when I read the when I call the read function, the the program gets stuck. And I sent a, a request to the to the site I, I bought the the, the well the, the chip. And they have sent me sent me that they they are sending me a, um, a replacement module. Uh, so if you want to see how it works, um, sure, I can say that it worked uh, three hours ago. I don't know if it will. Work now. I can you can confirm he, he had it a, was working before. A, That's fine. Problem. We call that the demo effect. They're shy robots. I mean. Well, uh, I developed a, an application, an Android application, which the first thing which has to do is um, look for the nearby nearby Bluetooth devices, and with his it has uh, discovered my my device. Then I can proceed to to connect, and then it changes the the blinking red light to a steady green light, and then I can work I can work with, with it. So I can <coughs> select, for instance, the uh, control remote mode. Awesome, still so works. I <laughs> well, I can do any, any movement. I can also change to autonomous mode, which it goes forward. And that's all. Very good. Thank you very much. Do you have a one quick question? OK, we have one more robot. That's all. I think we're going to have the last one. Uh, how, much time do we, how much time do we have? Five minutes. OK, we're good. Um, well, he will take questions later. He is sitting. Where, donde, donde te sientas? Where are you sitting? I mean, not now, but I mean in the arena. Okay, so you will come. You will come with us. He will be sitting with us with the rest of the robotics people. Um, come here. He will be sitting with us. So if you have any questions, that's a robot. That's a very handmade robot. Well, all of them are handmade, like the iron. Um, but he for sure will be able to guide you if you are looking for some new stuff to do. So we have. Oh no, no, you're good with one. That's fine. 
Uh, well, so I'm going to try to be really quick uh, because we don't have time. So, uh, my name is Carlos Garcia Saura uh, and I'm from Madrid uh, in Spain, uh, from Universidad Autónoma in Madrid. Uh, and well, I have brought this uh, robot who is called uh, GNBot, uh, who is basically a 3D printable uh, robot uh, intended for general research. So, it has um, uh, it is based on Arduino uh, and it has a custom shield uh, with various different sensors. So I'm trying to leave open the possibilities for uh, expandability, really. So right now it has a, a compass and a light sensor array and we're wor working towards integrating uh, artificial nose. Uh, so we can have uh, many of these robots, each one with uh, a nose, an electronic nose, uh, trying to locate uh, some others uh, in some place, like having the swarm of robots uh, locating others. Um, and well, if you uh, come to talk to me, I will be more than happy to explain more. But uh, yeah, basically, it's a very uh, replicable uh, robot, and the electronics are also very simple. And I'm also working on a machine for making the printed circuit board uh, easily. It's not only the 3D printed parts, but the, the circuit boards can be made with a, a machine that is similar to 3D printers, but uh, it's a, a mill for making the circuit board. So if you want to uh, know more, I have brought some of the boards. And uh, so this robot is called GNBot, and the mill for the making the circuit boards, uh, it's called uh, Cyclone PCB Factory. And it's also inside the RepRap project. Uh, for 3D printers. So yeah, I will be more than happy to uh, talk about this uh, offline. <laughs> uh, awesome, thank you. Um, well, just, um, I don't have a demo, <laughs> so. Uh, we don't have the nose, right? Sorry? We don't have the nose. We the, don't have the oh, actual no, nose. I, unfortunately here. not. <laughs> right. It's in development. But um, I, I wanted him to talk, definitely, because this is one of the only robots I've seen with an actual nose that actually can smell stuff, which I would totally recommend for the underground, for example, you know, so to let Definitely. people in or not, perfect idea. Um, do you have any questions? We have five minutes and we're gonna use about two, so, because we need another three minutes. Do you have any question about the nose robot or the mill and the, and the end robot? No, really? You don't have any question about a robot that has a nose? Really? What? You have a, a question there? Okay. What? More info about the nose, but I can't understand. Sorry, sorry. Some more info about the nose. I couldn't, I didn't understand. Is, is it a, a, a pre made thing or are you uh, making the nose? Uh, so I'm not making it myself, but. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so I'm not making the nose myself, but uh, the department I'm working with. Uh, called Grupo de Neurocomputación Biológica in my university back in Madrid. Um, they have developed um, the algorithms to turn a very cheap sensor into uh, uh, like a sensor using the gas alarms uh, to detect uh, different uh, odorants because uh, as it works in an alarm sensor is like uh, very uh, raw, like uh, you can't distinguish different, uh, it basically works with alcohol-like uh, odors, but uh, with these algorithms, they have managed to distinguish between very similar uh, chemical components. And yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we will, he's going to be sitting around the, um, the Let's Make Robots people. You guys have the reference here because you have a big table. Um, he's going to be there, so I'll, I'm going to encourage you to go and ask him about the nose because it's a very interesting project. Okay, thank you very much. We, I do have one last thing for you guys. I'm gonna ask you, if you have a robot, we have two minutes, so if you have a robot, just come on the stage and we'll take a picture, a family picture with the robots. What about that? Go, we'll have two minutes. Robot, picture, bring the robots. Sorry, my English is not British. That's why, right? Um. And again, if you have questions about any robotics related stuff, they are all very willing to help you with everything. I'm missing robots. Nice. I have my own little parrot robot. 
should talk. There you go. Yay. Oh, we're missing one. <laughs> awesome. Whoa, I feel famous now. So many flashes. Yeah, I don't have one. <laughs> oh. Come to let's make robots. Yeah. <laughs> I promise I'll bring mine. I'll bring mine next time. My robot is called Tupperbot, if you want to find it. And I have a website. Tupperbot, like the Tupperware, because I make it it's out of a... It's not what? It is not. I'm terrible with that. You promised it last year, too. I know. Anyway, Tupperbot, if you want to find out about my robot. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. We've learned a lot.